Hi, this is Todd Malico, DSEO faculty for Market Motive, an online marketing consultant at StuntDouble.com, and I'm here to give you an introduction to search engine optimization. We're going to look at some of the important SEO terminology and concepts, as well as take an overall high-level view of what you'll be learning during the search engine optimization course. So what is search engine optimization? It's the process of affecting your website or web page to impact the visibility in the search engine's natural or unpaid organic search results. Now what this means is if you do a search for something like SEO, you'll get some results here. You can see a couple good results and they'll tell you various things about search engine optimization. And when you're doing this search for something like what is SEO, you'll see ads to the top and to the right and you'll see that they're labeled and there's a little thin background there as well. These are the paid search results. Now the organic search results are those that are not impacted or influenced by those paid search results. They're not advertisements. They're the quote unquote organic search results. And search engine optimization is simply the practice of improving your website for each of the search engines so that they rank more effectively through understanding of the way that the search engines classify and rank documents, we can create a strategy for search engine optimization. And this strategy is dictated by a lot of different areas. It could be keyword research, it could be content development, it could be sitemap optimization, the design and speed of your website, the ways and the places that you interact in social media. You're gonna to need to monitor your rankings and your analytics and improve your website based on these things and document all of these things. Throughout this eight part course on search engine optimization, we'll look at a variety of areas that impact your website and web pages search engine result positioning. We're going to start with the on page fundamentals and the things on an individual web page that will impact your rankings. And we'll start by looking at a site that I developed and worked on myself for a small business that I run. We'll look at what we call signals or factors that we send to the search results through our web page optimization that shows them that this is relevant for this individual keyword. We'll look at the best practices for how we set up those URLs and the titles and keeping our copy accessible and relevant to the keywords that we're trying to rank for. And we do that through our keyword research. We'll create some seed lists and explore the entire keyword universe within whatever your niche or business is that your website is about. We'll determine how valuable those keywords are and which ones are most important to your business based on what you're trying to do. And then we'll take a look at those same keywords and do some opposition analysis. We'll run them through a search result and determine how competitive they are. If it's something that we can actually compete for, we'll prioritize our strategies and our optimization techniques based on the understanding of the keyword difficulty and benefit. And then we'll make organizational decisions about our website based on this understanding. With the newfound knowledge of our keyword research and how it relates to our website, we can organize our navigation and our user path priority and make sure that our site is accessible and designed effectively, clustering those keywords for individual landing pages so that we can later track those landing pages and track those users that came in through our site through the search engines. We'll also look at some of the domain and site-wide best practices considerations like exact match domain versus partial match domain. We'll look at some duplicate content concerns in areas where you might want to block things with robots.txt or redirect content with 301 redirects. We'll look at some sitemap best practices and how to further organize your site at the site-wide and domain-wide level so that bots or spiders crawl and index your site effectively. We'll also consider the topic of authorship and how that may be impacting Google search results and how it may be impacting link building and the types of links that we want to get and the value of these links. We'll look at some tactical examples of how to build links as well as some considerations and factors that may have a negative impact on your website's search rankings. If you're a local business, we'll look at how to register your business for local and optimize those listings as well as build citations in local directories 
and we'll take a look at 20 of the local search ranking factors and how each one of those individually affects your website and its position in the search results. Finally, for documentation purposes, we'll look at conducting site audits in 12 different common areas, including on-page, off-page, content, crawling, and many others. We'll look at common site issues and over 50 questions you can ask to make sure that your site is as optimal as it can be for the search engine. Through this documentation and through this understanding, we'll start to form our website goals, and we know from the onset that our goals with SEO includes links and higher rankings and improving the traffic and ultimately conversions and sales to see what's good for the business, what's important to the business, what keywords should be a priority to the business, ultimately that those keywords support the business goals and the business directions of the website that you're working on. But before we get into goals and how it impacts analytics and how we work with Google Webmaster Tools, let's step back and take a look at how search engines work. So understanding exactly how a search engine works would require understanding all of the algorithm factors, all of the search ranking factors, all of the bells and whistles and black boxes that are at the Googleplex to display relevant results to their users. But in its simplest terms, there's three ways that a search engine works. And the first is the web spiders index documents. And we'll take a look at what each of these areas means in more depth as we go through this, but the spiders index documents. And then the users search for keywords. The algorithms then return the query results. The algorithms decide what's relevant to what the user searches and presents those results to the user. So as we dive into this a little bit deeper, we see some synonymous terms associated with a lot of this vernacular and SEO jargon. So we want to identify and define some of these terms as well as the synonymous terms associated with them. So with spiders, they're also called robots or crawlers. It's synonymous with spiders. These are all ways to say search engine spiders. And these spiders crawl the web, thus they're called crawlers, and they're software to find and organize websites. They're just creating that index, that database of information. The spiders are the document discovery phase. They find websites and crawl to another website, or they find a sitemap and they crawl to another web page, and they index those and put those into the database of information and that database of information is called the search engine index you'll hear this called the index the database Google's database index etc and the individual documents that they index within the database consists of different file types it could be a HTML document it could be CSS it could be a Adobe PDF portable document file it could be a lot of these other files but it's really an individual document and they spider and collect and organize a multitude of documents so these search spiders index documents that's the first step in the process the second step in the process is the user search for keywords and users are on a variety of devices and they're searching with a variety of intent. And they expect that they're going to get relevant search results. That's why they come back to Google is because they return relevant results. So these users are searching on a variety of devices. So you need to make sure that your website is mobile and PC friendly. We're entering the era of more people searching on mobile quote unquote devices being iPads and iPhones and Android devices than ever before. It's actually surpassing desktop market growth and there's more people searching on mobile than on local now. We see that this is an important component to serve the user what they're looking for based on if they're mobile or on a desktop because the experience is going to be a little bit different. And the users search keywords. They search almost exclusively on Google. Google has 70 or 80 percent market share so when we talk about SEO most times we're talking about Google they serve over 5 billion queries per day that's over 115 queries per month and of those 5 billion queries per day around 15 percent are new searches meaning something that's never been searched for before so these users are searching phrases and keywords that have never been searched before on Google they're unique these unique key phrases help to demonstrate the difference between long tail and short tail keywords. 
in the long tail, people will search for longer phrases and new variations and terms and phrases that have not been searched in Google before. And this demonstrates the vast array of the types of information that people are searching for and expecting to find in the Google search results. At the short tail of that is very short queries that are repeated often. Maybe online colleges or colleges being an example of what we call a short tail or head term. And at the head, there's very high search volume, but there's also very high opposition in those search results. There's a lot of people who want to rank for the term colleges or even online colleges. You start to get into the chunky middle or fat head when you add some phrases to that. And then you get into the long tail of the keywords when you get into a phrase like online nursing degree college programs in Michigan. The more phrases that you add, the more information that you add to that search query, the longer that phrase is and the more it gets into what we call the long tail of search keywords. But what's really important here is the user intent with those long tail keywords. It's much more pronounced when you can see that a user is searching for a long tail phrase and they're looking for very specific information. There's also other types of user intent that we can segment and account for and create our strategy around. We can make sure that we're serving the appropriate type of content to someone who's doing an informational query that starts with something like what is or who is or how, how things work. If they're doing a navigational query, they're probably just looking for the website and typing in www. And what we're really searching for as a search engine marketer, as an SEO professional, is those transactional phrases. Currency trading software demo. Currency trading software download. These are examples of phrases that are going to convert into business. And that's what we're looking to do with our SEO strategies and campaigns. We want to target these high value users and a very good predictive indicator of high value users is cost per click or PPC prices. Google is selling each one of these keywords and we can see how much it would cost to purchase those if we were going to purchase those through PPC advertising. There's a big difference between things like currency exchange and currency trading. The intent with currency exchange is a traveler exchanging some money to travel. With currency trading, it's a stockbroker looking for macroeconomic information and looking to trade currencies with some type of platform. The difference between buy timeshares and sell timeshares is about $20 or $30. The same applies to car insurance versus car insurance quotes. The level of specificity specificity and intent plays a big role on the value of search traffic and that's one of the things we want to keep in mind when we're doing our keyword research and certainly that we want to keep in mind when we're understanding how search engines work and that users search these keywords in different areas of intent. Only about 10% of these are transactional so we really need to identify and segment these users when we are able to do that. We also want to understand the volume, the number of people in that short tail searching for a phrase. You can see here through an AdWords tool that we can see the number of average monthly searches. This is what we refer to as search volume. And we can see the suggested bid price for that type of keyword is, in this case, 88 cents. And these two figures give us some nice data to make decisions around our keyword research. We're looking at the value of that phrase with the cost per click. And using that and search volume together gives us an overall benefit idea of what it would be like to rank number one for a keyword and the value associated with that. The last section after users search keywords is algorithms return query results. This is really the nitty gritty of how the search engines work. An algorithm is a software program to return these search results. It's gonna make decisions based on relevance with over 200 factors at their disposal. There's lots and lots of things powering the back end of Google to make the decisions of what gets returned in the search results. So algorithms determine why a page ranks where it does. If I search Catch Atlantic Sailfish, those first three sites, why are they in the positions that they are positioned in? Well, it's because of their page authority, their domain authority, and 198 other factors. And that really is the secret sauce or the black box of search engines is their algorithm. The algorithm that returns those search results to the users. And we can get an idea of a lot of these factors from this document here and the 
Moz SEO ranking factors. But we can see the way that they break it down into page link authority, page level social, and there's a lot of different aspects and signals and factors that we can look at here. And these again are synonymous terms, factors, variables, signals, indicators. These are all search engine factors that impact where your web page or where your website is going to show up in the results. And the algorithm is what determines that. We don't want to be chasing the algorithm. We just want to understand how it works. If there are mild, subtle changes, we can change our site appropriately. So there's a lot of very complex functions going on at the query and algorithm level. You can see that they're determining the topic or doing keyword relevant scoring on the documents that they have indexed that they're now presenting in the search results. And they want this to be fast. When a user performs their query, Google responds to that almost in real time. It's very, very quick and uh, they suggest a lot of the keywords now with Google Suggest. You can see they're determining user intent, they're seeing if there's local intent, they're expanding queries, they're doing spell correction. A lot of things are going on at that query level and then the algorithm is producing those results based on keyword relevance, based on overall relevance and quality of websites and it's presenting those in what we call the search engine result pages. You'll often hear these called SERPs that can be the search engine result pages or search engine result positions. And the positions are the individual locations. If we do a search for this, we can see number one, two, and three for Ernest Hemingway. We call this the keyword rank, the keyword ranking, the keyword results is the collection of those SERPs or search engine result pages. And each of these individual positions is a keyword rank, ranking, or your keyword result. And those are determined by that algorithm. Search traffic refers to the visitors that come to your website through the search engines. And search traffic is traditionally more valuable than other types of web visitors because of the relevance and the intent of those users. So we want to determine the overall value of a SEO campaign and say why is it important to rank for these keywords. Well, the real benefit is obviously in achieving that number one ranking or achieving a first page ranking. And there are some estimate click-through rates on various search results based on studies that have been done. Here's some of those numbers. I don't put a lot of credence in there. Training.seo book has some good information on the value of a front page result and the relative click-through rates and this type of thing. But we know that it's valuable web real estate to be on the front page of the search results. This gives us an overall view of some of the terminology on how search engines work. We see that the spiders index the documents, the users search the keywords, and the algorithms return the query results. And when we do a search for what is SEO, we can see the ads and the pay-per-click at the top or on the sides. We can see the organic search results that are the ones that are indexed by the spiders and returned without any type of paid placement. And then we also see what we call feature in air quotes search results or universal search or blended search. Uh, these are all terminologies for news, images, and the other types of search features that are triggered at the query level when a user searches for something. An example of this would be the Google Knowledge Graph. If we do a search for Ernest Hemingway, we see a knowledge box here. That box tells us all about Ernest Hemingway and answers our question about him without actually the need to click through on a search result. These pay-per-click ads, we can easily identify with the term ads up there. We can see things like Carousel and Google Maps if there's local search intent. And you'll get a variety of these 85 search features. If you'd like to identify more of those, uh, Dr. Pete has a great presentation on all of these different features, including site links, related searches, similar searches, image block, news results, video, etc. There's only 15% of queries now that don't contain any of these 85 search features. In a search using branded terms, we'll often find what's called site links, another feature of the 85 search features in Google. And we can see with something like Macy's, we have women's clothing and men's clothing direct links into their site for those links. So rather than just having a single listing, they have their ad, their branded search, and site links 
to individual areas of the site to make navigation easier for the user. The site links and the 85 other search features are contributing to what's called vertical creep, and this means pushing those organic search results down the page so there's less real estate being covered by those organic search results. So it's becoming harder to achieve those as well as more valuable that organic search traffic. If we look at an example of Miami fishing charters here, we can see that this page is nearly all ads. There's ads here, this is an ad, this is an ad, and the whole right side is an advertisement. And then there's probably even some advertisements in the local map section uh, that's listed here below. So you can see how that vertical creep and those ads and the different features, in this case being local, are pushing those results down the page and making it more difficult to achieve those organic rankings. So this is a lot to cover. We looked at all kinds of aspects of how how a search engine works, and if you need to know more about this or any of the topics that we covered or you're concerned about some of the terminology, I urge you to do a search at one of these places. I've set up a couple custom searches that you can get to, Todd at SEO Search and Todd at SEO Search 2, and these will give you some websites that will help to answer your questions just to customize Google search engine around SEO. If you're looking for books around the topic, I suggest The Art of SEO, SEO Secrets from Danny Dover, and Search Engine Optimization Visual Blueprint from Chris Jones. Some of the suggested websites are listed here. Matt Cuts and the Shortcuts gives videos from Google on what's important, Google guidelines, etc. And some of the other sites here will give you very valid and wonderful information on overall SEO. So we covered what SEO is, what you'll learn, how to learn it, how search engines work, and a lot of the common SEO terminology and vernacular that you'll be using throughout this course. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Todd Malicote.